Hello, welcome to the North Church Parent Podcast. My name is Christian Velez. I'm the student pastor here at North Church, and we have created this podcast to help you parents navigate difficult conversations with your kids, but also teach your kids spiritual things uh, on your home. Uh, we're excited that you have joined us, and let me tell you to subscribe on YouTube, on your Apple uh, podcast or anywhere where you're watching because we put a video every single month and I'm excited for today's conversation. We have with us Ferris Stout. Ferris Stout oversees our worship here at North Church, but she has done many things here and in her background in ministry. And one, thank you so much for being here. We're honored. And tell us a little bit about you and your family. Well, Christian, thank you for having me. I feel honored uh, to be here with you. So my family, my husband, Tony, and I, we've been married. We celebrate 25 years of marriage this July. And so I'm super excited about that. It's going to be good times ahead. That's awesome. Um, I was five when you guys got married. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, uh, we have six kids. So our oldest is 29 and our youngest just graduated high school. Yep. He's 18, going to be going off to college this year. And so it's been a fun ride. We are a blended family. Yep. And so we have those dynamics. We're blended in multiple ways. So that's fun. Yep. God has uh, given us grace and uh, wisdom and insight. And so we... We have fun and we have four grandsons. That's awesome. That's crazy to say, but it's fun. Well, Farah, you are the worship pastor here at Nortridge, but what are some other things you have done in ministry before? Yeah. So I was a worship pastor for 11 and a half years on staff at another church and then took a year of pause, did some traveling and speaking, uh, and then came on staff here at North as a kids pastor. And uh, it was funny. I remember when I was going through the process and I was like, you know, I'm not a kid's pastor. (laughs) And it was along the way, someone made a joke. They're like, you have six kids, like surely. (laughs) But I'd had a background, uh, you know, in church leadership. Mm -hmm. And I definitely love kids passionately. Uh, We've laughed and said now that we're headed into the season as empty nesters, um, we, we borrow other people's kids. So, <laughs> hey, parents, <laughs> free babysitting if you're looking for it. The stouts, you know, yeah. we're, we're bonus grandparents. Yeah. <laughs> That's all. And you guys do so well. I love seeing your husband with babies and how he take care of kids. Uh, your whole family is uh, one of the things about that I love about your family is when you guys do something, you and Tony, it's like the whole stout team <laughs> does it as well. And they are so good at uh, uh, taking care of kids and loving, loving kids more than anything. We love so, families. Yeah. We love, we love people. Um, we love to create, uh, memories and moments and, and laugh and enjoy, um, each other. But also we, we don't mind the messy yeah. either. <laughs> and family is messy and all of that. So it's good. Well, Farah, we're going to toss this to Christian Melman, our podcast producer, and he has an icebreaker question for you. Okay. <laughs> All right, Farah, thank you so much for joining us. I'm excited about our conversations today. It's going to be amazing. Um, this question is strictly personal. It has nothing to do with our podcast. Um, it has everything to do with the fact that I've gotten to know your family over the past few years, travel, hang out, uh, go bowling with yourself, all sorts of things. And so my question to you, Farah, is out of all of your kids, who is winning in a battle royale fight to the death? I think there's a low hanging fruit answer that people are going to want to say, but I think there's going to be a shocking answer if I had to pick. So who is winning in that battle royal? I'm going to throw it back to you. Oh gosh. Uh, a fight to the death. I the think royal it will be Rumble? looked out. So. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's naturally like first they're going to think Luke. Um, just because he's, so he's young not and he's strong and you know, but uh, Avery, she got some, she got some skills, you know, she's going to be sleuth, but Mackenzie, it's going to be a cat fight trying to hang <laughs> on to her. And then, you know, she's pretty, it would be, I'm going to go with Mackenzie. <laughs> okay. 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 Well, parents and Farah, thank you so much for, again, taking the time to be here with us. And we're going to get into our conversation about worship. Now, 
one of the reasons why I'm, I, I love this podcast and the reason why we do it is because we have we, we have based this whole podcast on Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he's old, he will not depart from it. Mm -hmm. So we want to teach kids spiritual disciplines. We want to have difficult conversations with our kids. We want to welcome uh, difficult conversations with our kids because when they're old, the Bible says that if we train them in the right way, they can go to the left or to the right, but when they're old, they will come back. They will always return to the path of the Lord. Now, I'm excited to talk about this because I'm about to be a dad now. Natalie is pregnant, yes. and I want to learn about worship and how to teach my kids about worship. So what is worship, and how do I explain worship to my kids? It's a great question, <laughs> and it's a big, it's a big topic, uh, and, and yet there's a simplicity to it as well because worship, it truly is. It's that heart response. It's a heart response, and so we can find ourselves... Uh, if we're not careful, offering our worship in other places mm. to other things. Um, I, there's a song that's been stirring in my heart over and over, over the last few days, like to worship you. Uh, I live to worship you, God, I live yeah. to worship you. And so what does that look like? Because oftentimes people frame worship, like our idea when we say worship, it's framed up with musical no notes, a melody, yep. harmony. For you know, years song. I thought that's what it was. Yes. Or it's that hour on Sunday or you turn the radio on and yep. you know and that's how we frame it up. But worship is lived all throughout our our day like that heart response of um it, it does encompass like singing songs, offering praise and offering, you know, songs of adoration and thanksgiving to God, but also obedience. You know, uh, in, in John 4, it talks about God is a spirit and those who worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. Well, what is the truth of that? That worship is, it's a living sacrifice, yep. you know, and that we are, God asks us to bring a sacrifice of praise and honor and worship to him. Um, there's a, there's a term, it's a Greek term. Uh, you're like, Oh, you're throwing Greek at me <laughs> here with my kids, you know, but, uh, it's all about teaching mm -hmm. and modeling for them and, and proskinu, that term means to bow. And so sometimes it does look like that physical posture. Uh, you know, maybe you have a moment in the church, in your home where you're bringing your family together and you're bowing before him, you're kneeling you know, um, another definition of that, you know, is a kiss. So to give our Heavenly Father, you know, like that, that intimacy. Yeah. yeah. You know, but also that word means to serve. Yeah. And so how do I serve my family? How do I serve my community? How do I serve the look like? What does that look like? I even think about moments with my family. We've talked a little bit about them, but where we've had times out Christmas Eve last year, we were having this massive um, Nerf gun fight, you know. I saw uh, it. Yes. I saw the video. <laughs> you know, and, and I'll say this in full transparency, that, mer that massive Nerf gun fight where we're laughing and having fun, like before that, there had been kind of this meltdown in our family and we had to kind of come and, and recenter mm -hmm. ourselves. But then we have this moment and we're laughing and enjoying one another. And I remember pausing in that moment and giving God thanks and, and thinking, God, mm -hmm. this is a moment made for worship. Yeah. You know, yeah. how do you, how can you demonstrate worship outside of experiences? I know you talk a little bit about uh, obedience and things like, how can we, how can we show our kids that? Because they're watching. They are. You know, watching. we can say all we want, but they really what they're gonna do is follow the example that we are uh, presenting them. How can we demonstrate worship to them outside of Sunday mornings? Ooh, that's a big, uh, that's a big question, and and yet um, it's something that we shouldn't overthink. Again, I think we can sometimes try to over-spiritualize mm -hmm. what that looks like. Bring them alongside you, uh, you know, as you go to serve 
you know, someone, your neighbor, yeah. you know, interacting with your neighbor, or serving your neighbor, caring for someone, bring them alongside you, um, you know, as you're, as you're serving in the church mm-hmm. um, as well. But also as you're driving, you know, to go to school in the morning, are you having conversations that around scripture? Are you putting on some songs, yeah. you know, that, bring praise because praise is, uh, about God. We're singing about God and you read in Psalms, you know, where David, I will bless the Lord at all mm-hmm. times. His praise will p- continually be on my lips. Um, but then also singing to the Lord and praying, you know, to yeah. the Lord and allowing your kids to see you model that you said that earlier, like, the whole goal of this like let's get tools let's get resources let's practice that scripture train of Mm -hmm. a child let it's training and so training is practicing over and over and it's practicing and it's not perfected um it it can be messy it doesn't have to be perfect and um just do it just start somewhere and have fun with it Mm -hmm. that's important for kids, but it's also yeah. important for adults. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, our vision, uh, love God, love people. But in North kids, they say, have fun, yeah. follow Jesus. We yeah. can't forget to, you know, have fun and enjoy things. I feel like way. a lot of times people think when they think of worship, they think of that, just the reverence that I have to be quiet. I cannot be too loud. And it seems that it's, there is some reverence to it, but yes. we can we can have fun. We can be uh, loud and creative when we're worshiping God. Now, does worship look the same for everyone? I don't think so. Um, I I approach it this way, and I've had lots of conversations with different um, worship pastors, worship leaders, and pastors. Um, in that there are different personalities, Mm -hmm. you know? And so again, even if you just take that framework of in an experience here, um, you see all those different personalities represented. You see people at different, you know, stages Mm -hmm. in their faith journey. And so for me, I'm like, crazy yeah Yeah, I mean you see me like I'm gonna jump I'm gonna dance I'm and part of that is because my personality it's who who I am like I'm big and I can be loud and demonstrative Mm -hmm. you know but for that person um, that is you know in the audience maybe they are more reserved and we can sit you know from even from a platform and look out and and place judgment on yeah. people, you know, like, I just wish that they would worship. Um, but how that do doesn't mean, not, yeah. how do I know? How do I yeah. know? That's a heart response. Yeah. And like when we just talked about, like, it is a heart response, yeah. you know, to the Lord. I do believe that there is going to be outward expressions. Mm-hmm. You're going to see it. You're going to hear it, you know, in their conversations, the fruit yeah. of their life. But whether they're big and boisterous, you know, and super expressive, um, that's not evidence yeah. of worship. I used to think that, <laughs> kind of like what you say, like, why are people not worshiping? Because they were not expressive like I am. But probably in your family, all of your kids probably express worship in a different way. And I think it's very important as a parent to understand their personality and guide them in worship. And maybe you have a kid that is loud and crazy and like to dance, and you have another one that chose to sit. You know, I think it's just having those conversations and also not making them feel like you have to be more like your brother and sister or you have to be more like, you know, your mom and dad. I think that's an important conversation too to have. And it took me a little while to understand. Sometimes people are just standing there, but that doesn't mean that they're not worshiping. Yes. And it's not about, you know, being able to sing well, like my husband, you know, he, he laughs and he talks about how he always sits right underneath um, the speakers when possible. So that when he does sing, (laughs) he's like, I can split a church. If you put me on the worship team, give me a microphone, you know, I'll split a church. Uh, It is not, you know, framed into that. And so having that freedom, you know, to just honor God 
um, that heart response, that obedience, that sacrifice of your flesh. So, you know, I encourage you do a little bit more than what you've done before. Mm -hmm. You know, if you come into that space and you're like, I'm not comfortable clapping my hands, well, tap your foot, (laughs) you know, put a smile on it, you know, maybe smile, maybe you need a smile in that moment. You know, I have moments where it has looked very different. Like some moments, even with me being a a singer, being an instrumentalist, being a worship pastor, but sometimes like you were talking about, I just sit and, and take in that yeah. moment, you know, or even throughout my week, it may look different, you know, and how I'm responding, mm-hmm. but it is a living sacrifice. Worship is more than singing. We have talked about Very that today. Much. I've learned that there's more than singing. You know, sometimes we, we think of worship and we just think of that time that we're singing, that, 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 that time of, of, of songs and praise, but you talked about obedience. You talked about honoring and uh, respecting, you know, the things of God. It's also a way that we can worship. Um, there are many ways of worship, and uh, well, thank you for that. Now, what are some good worship songs that kids are drawn to, and are they specific worship artists that create songs like this? Maybe we have parents that they're maybe they're new to the faith and they're trying to find out what's some good music that I can play my kids so they can uh, worship and sing and learn. Uh, do you have any good artists? You don't want mines. Mines yeah. are not great. <laughs> They're in Spanish. <laughs> there are so many great uh, worship mm-hmm. artists, worship teams that are out there to draw from uh, now. And and part of it begin it is determined by like the age and the stage of your kids. Yeah. But I'll say this, even overarching, the songs that we're singing within our church experiences, we have parents that bring their kids into the experience for the worship part because the kids are connected and they engage that. And then even with some of the resources now, like you can, if you're driving down, you know, the road, you're listening to Kayla of those different radio stations, they're, you know, specifically playing just worship songs now. Um, and so you don't have to think, well, I have a young kid, so I, I have to have, yeah. you know, music that is targeted towards them. But there are some great resources out there that are targeted towards the different phases and yeah. stages of your kid's life. Yancey, Not Nancy is a good one. So this would be for younger kids. Um, Hillsong kids, New Spring uh, kids, those are some that um, we've used a lot through the years. Uh, Amber Sky Records, I believe is the name, that we use a lot, like even within North Kids. Um, Jumpstart 3 is a great resource because um, they they are specifically scriptures oh, wow. uh, that are put to song. That was something that I practiced with my kids uh, when they were little is I would I would take the different psalms and we would i wanted them to memorize the scripture because the songs that we are singing uh they are rooted in scripture yeah. you know uh you're you're learning principles of god the truth of god's word you know as we're singing you know those songs as we're responding and then that stays stirred up, like I mentioned earlier, like a song that's been in my heart because song is song music is universal, mm-hmm. you know. And so I listen to Dutch worship a lot. I'm not sure <laughs> why I've been drawn to that, you know. But like I can hear music, and I'm like, oh, it connects me. We sing the yeah. song in English, you know, and it and it it, it connects. But for older um, kids, you know, teens, SEU worship is you know a great one, of course. Uh, we pull a lot from Elevation, Belonging Co., you know, Bethel. Yeah. But I see young and old responding yeah. to the same, you know, yeah. style and worship song. So what is your preference? Yeah. You know? What are some scripture we can read to our children about worship? So a good foundational scripture, which this is one that, you know, I taught my kids early on. Like we memorized it when they were like 18 months old. Um, you know, so don't put a limit, you know, on your kids and their capacity mm-hmm. and what they can do. Um, but the Psalm, that whole Psalm 100, it's a foundational scripture in worship. Um, 
Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come mm -hmm. before him with joyful songs. Know that he is God. It is he who mm -hmm. made us and we are his. We are his people, uh, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. You know, and so just it's the word is full of scriptures mm -hmm. that reflect and demonstrate that heart response and demonstrate people who modeled living out worship to the Lord. Um, you know, even in, in John, we talked about it earlier, John 4, 24, God is spirit. And uh, those that worship him, worship him in spirit mm -hmm. and in truth. So fully knowing God and knowing who he is in our lives and knowing the truth of his word. So it's important that heart response of obedience is living those living out those spiritual yeah. disciplines. Like we're living a life of worship to the Lord when we practice spiritual disciplines in our lives. So there's no no time frame for when you should start no, reading do it scripture. Now. Do it now. <laughs> do it now. <laughs> it's do not it too now. late either. Exactly. Yeah. Just yeah. do something like yeah. do it now. Like know God and and let him know how grateful that mm -hmm. you are for what he's done in your life. Bring that response, you know, to him. Sometimes we can think, well, he's God. He knows everything. I don't need to say it. I don't need to act it out, yeah. you know. Um, but with my husband, how does he know that I love and adore and cherish him? Yeah. How do my kids know that I love and adore and cherish them if there's not an outward demonstration mm -hmm. if i don't vocalize yeah. it's also things. a reminder to ourselves that we do love the lord and we do yes. want to worship the lord um is it is there is any not any is there is any importance or value do you think of kids seeing their parents in corporate worship because sometimes like for example uh we have our experiences and we have our kids experiences and Maybe kids have never seen their parents worship. Mm -hmm. uh, is, that, is that important for, for children to see their parents? I believe it's extremely valuable for kids to see their parents, to have moments. Um, I know that it's important for them to have those spaces. I believe in that. I was a kid's pastor. Mm -hmm. um, but, and even when I was young, you know, I was in those spaces of kids church, of student ministry. And so those, those are important spaces and moments, you know, that are targeted towards them at their level. But I think it's important for them to come in and have those moments like night of worship, bring your kids alongside of you. I always, I think of those moments or candlelight experience, you know, where we are all together. Yeah. We don't have all of our kids' Be classes open. Be intentional about that. I, I think of it as family dinner or a family reunion yeah. where we're all coming together. And so sometimes as parents, we can think, oh, my kids, I'm not sure if they're going to be, be, behave. And, you know, they're, they're kind of going to be loud and they're going to be antsy. And I'm like, I, I see that on a weekly basis, <laughs> standing on a platform. You know, adults are that they can be that way too. They can be yeah. antsy. They can be distracted. Yeah. Um, you know, but it can. It's messy. Family dinners messy oh. when you're all coming together and it's loud yeah. and you know it can be a little bit chaotic. But we have those intentional spaces because it's important yes. for them to see parents moved by the power of the Holy Spirit, moved in moments where we're gathered together and we're responding together mm -hmm. and we're all pushing towards the same thing, where they see that gathering, you know, and yep. it's collaborative. Mm -hmm. uh, and we see God more clearly even in those moments when we're doing it together as a family. So one way is coming to corporate worship, like you say, candlelight, that we have those intentional ones with the whole families here. We have those night of worships uh, here at North Church. Come and be part of that so you can worship with your kids. You also talked about doing it at home, yeah. having a time where you worship with your kids so they can see you uh, worshiping. Because, you know, as as parents, and now, now I'm a parent, even though my son or daughter is nine weeks old in the womb, I am responsible 
to teach them how to worship. So I have to model that so they can follow on that path. Like we talked about, train your child in the way that he should go. And even when he's old, he will never depart from it. Farah, what would you tell a parent that maybe is not expressive on worship or maybe doesn't know much about worship? How can they still train their kids and worship and tell them about worship? What would you tell to that parent that might be new to the faith? And it's like, I want to, I just don't know how to. I think it comes back to what we've mentioned a couple of times is just move, just do something, just start, yeah. don't be afraid. And, and you don't have to understand it all. I don't understand it all. Yeah. You know, I've been on this journey of faith and loving the Lord and serving the Lord for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> You know, y'all tease me about sometimes I, the anxious being the anxious of days, <laughs> you know, but uh, I don't have it perfected. Yeah. You know, I don't fully know and understand God. I'm still discovering, but just do it. And so some simple things that you can do, you don't have to overthink it. But one of the things that we did as a family is um, we had people had different schedules. Our kids had activities and schedules, but we would do a team stout where we would huddle together. Um, you know, for some families, they, they can do that every day. They practice that and do that every day. For some, it's once a week for some time they're doing that huddle once a month, but then they're having the conversations yeah. and, you know, intentionally in drives or whatever, but have those moments where you're coming together and they put on you don't have to sing yourself, yeah. put on a worship song. We do that. And we are a very musical family, but we'll just put on a worship song and just let it play. Yeah. And whether we stand, whether we sit, sometimes we'll just open up our hands. Mm -hmm. You know, we close our eyes and just focus on the Lord. Maybe we kneel down on the carpet and suck carpet for, <laughs> you know, 30 seconds, yeah. a minute, just bowing before the Lord and honoring him. Uh, we've had moments where we're like, okay, kiddo, we want you to read the scripture. And what does this mean to you? Unpack yeah. this, you know, and let's talk about it, you yeah. know, together and learn together. I'll say this. I've told um, adults the fastest way to accelerate your growth and your learning uh, in learning scripture and understanding God's word is gather some kids around you and learn together. Don't be afraid. You know, we've had adults that I'm like, when I was the kids pastor and I'm like, would you come be a small group leader? And they're like, I feel like I'm so young. I don't, I feel like I'm ill-equipped. Like I couldn't yeah. lead a small group. Like I don't have all the answers. And I'm like, you don't have to have yeah. all the answers. And that is the important thing is just being authentic with your kids. I don't know it all. Mm -hmm. Let's learn together. Yep. Let's grow together. Like Let's that. do this together. Well, Farah, thank you so much for teaching us about worship and how to teach our kids about worship. Thank you for joining us. If you have a question that you would love for us to discuss, send it to parents at north.church and we will bring somebody that can help us answer uh, your question. Before you go, make sure you subscribe so you can get a notification every month when our new episode comes out. Thank you for joining us.